Namaste everyone. Welcome to Upaj episode 16 and tonight we have the astounding Aditya Modak ji with us and if you have Netflix I'm sure you have watched the movie The Disciple which revolves around the life of a struggling khayalia who wants nothing but to internalize the beautiful and majestic form of Hindi- Hindustani classical music. So today before we call Aditya ji to our studio we'll be listening to a fantastic Kamod of his a recording which I personally really 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 love. So I'm going to play it right now. Please do enjoy. Thank you for joining. Jane na dunge e kare 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 jane na kare jane na dunge eri mai apne balam ko na 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 me gajra ko palakana mund mund kare jane na dunge e kare kare jane na jane na dunge kare jane na dunge kare kare jane na dunge kare jane na dunge kare jane na dunge jane na dunge kare jane na dunge e kare jane ha kare jane na ha kare jane na ha kare jane ha Namaste Aditya ji welcome namaste, to Upaj episode 16 we have thank you for having me so we are really glad that you made it here and it's it's a huge honor for us we have chitrayud ghatak also with me in the studio and we are both going to be interviewing you today <clears throat> hello welcome uh, to every one of you thank you for having me and like i said it's a pleasure and yeah hoping to have a nice discussion and a chat yeah okay so we are going to start this evening with our first and one of the most cliched sections that is your history 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So the first question from me to mm-hmm. you is that in your early years you have trained under Sri Chandrakant Parker Sab and Sri Pradeep Dhonchi. So yeah. could you tell us about your formative years? Yes, sure. So so the way I got into classical music uh, was a very interesting story actually. Uh, my parents always, for some reason, you know, always wanted me to have some you know sanskar. Uh, even though none, none of my family members are into music, they always wanted you know to uh, I get some sanskars of music. Uh, so they put me in a crash, like a babysitting, uh, because both of them were working. And uh, it happened to be that, you know, uh, it was like I was in a crash uh, at Sri Chandrakant Parker's house. So since I was one and a half years of age, I have been listening to classical music because he used to teach there and uh, his wife, I still, we call her I only. So she used to take care of us and he used to take classes in other rooms. And what used to happen was all the other kids used to play, but somehow I developed a liking towards that. So I used to always go and sit in the class or my ears were always attracted towards what he was teaching. And... Over, over a few years, you know, he found out that, you know, he's really get, uh, finding a lot of interest in this kind of music. So by the time I was five years of age, uh, you know, he thought, you know, he'll start uh, making me sit there and start teaching me. And uh, I'd really like to uh, tell everyone, you know, because what happens is at that tender age, if you are listening to all this music, it all goes into your subconscious mind. Uh, it's the best sanskar you can do in the first five years of age. And the result was like when he actually started teaching me, he never had to teach me like Saregamo or anything because I already knew by uh, by that. He directly started with the Raz and this thing. And uh, I, it was not Greek and Latin for me, you know, when I sat there for the first time. Somehow I could relate to that. So uh, I think, yeah, that, that pretty much, you know, uh, says the importance of listening to the music uh, as much as possible. And it's best if you can, you know, listen to it at that tender age. Uh, so yeah, that's how the whole classical learning classical music journey began. I was learning f- uh, with him for another few years uh, till I was, you know, old enough to not be in a crash. <laughs> and uh, after uh, we also shifted to another place, and it was a little bit difficult for me, uh, you know, because I was not that old, you know, to travel alone. So. It was difficult for me to continue, but I anyways wanted to. So we asked uh, Parker sir himself, and he suggested that somehow, fortunately, where, where we were, you know, shifting and staying, uh, his student, Sri Pradeep Dhonji, he was anyways taking classes very nearby to that place. So he suggested, you know, like, if you want to continue, you can always continue from him. And that's how I started learning from him. And that also continued... I would say it was him who, you know, inculcated a lot of more interest uh, for me. But even at that point, uh, I had a lot of interest in, especially classical music as compared to any other forms, uh, because that's how, like, that's what I've been hearing, you know, since I can can remember, I would say. So, uh, but still at that point, I wouldn't say I had decided to make a career or, you know, pursue it professionally or anything like that. I, I still remember I wanted to become a doctor, like really, uh, really badly. And I was trying everything I can until uh, I was in ninth. I still remember that. And what happened was, <laughs> excuse me, uh, there was a Gharana Sammelan that happened in Daisar itself, where we were staying. And there were four vocalists. So uh, for Agra Gharana, we had Pandit Raja Miyanji. For Jaipur Gharana, we had Pandit Raghunandan Panshikarji. Uh, Sau Pandita... Varadha Godboli ji had come to represent Kirana Garana and my Guruji, Dr. Pandit Ram Deshpande, he was representing Gwalior Garana. And that was the first time uh, I heard him, you know, this was almost 20 years back, I remember. And somehow I was so astonished, like at that day I decided, you know, I want to sing like this. I still remember that day. I remember what he sang. I have like a vivid memory of uh, the thing, but there was no access for me to, you know, get in touch with him or learn from him or nothing like that. Uh, but the best ways uh, to get in touch with him was what I did was I literally stalked him for another two years 
by attending all his concerts like wherever they may right from here to pune wherever it was possible i used to attend all guruji's concerts and you know i was just a kid like i was in like 7th 8th grade and i used to go right in the front and sit right in the front row and listen to his whole three hour concert and i did it so often and so much that he started recognizing me that this i know this kid who always comes to my concert and listens to me and when you know after a concert you know i made up that courage and went up there to you know touch his feet uh, with my parents of course so by the time he had recognized me you know he's like yeah yeah i know this kid and then you know we approached him like he wants to learn and that's how then the whole journey uh, of learning from guruji started so yeah uh sorry for the long answer to your short question but uh yeah that that's how the whole story began actually uh, the latter half uh, of your answer actually resonated with me in a personal level because uh, when i first heard my guru ulhas bua's music i i had a moment of epiphany a uh, realization dawned upon me and i realized that if this is called khayal then this is what i want to sing for the rest of my life so this is what happens in general i also stopped him for a couple of years and now i'm learning from him that's uh, so much of your talim has been and is still going on under guru pandit ram desh pande ji for more than two decades now so please tell us about your journey with pandit ji and do share a few memorable experiences so you were stalking him and then you approached him i suppose and then how did everything turn out so so <laughs> so uh, first he called us and he heard me you know and thanks to my earlier guruji's blessings you know i could sing at least that much where you know he was uh, not impressed enough but you know he said look okay, i'm ready to teach you at least you know i i, I could sing that much where i was not rejected by him out front uh, uh, but yeah so that's how he started but he was very clear when he was uh, teaching at that point uh in the first meeting because he said that you know i don't want you to you know just come here and waste your and my time uh, unless you want to commit to this and if you want to pursue this you know very seriously uh i am ready to teach you i am very glad uh but you know i don't want you know to just come here spend two two years and then you know just run away again and do your whatever academics and never turn up so you know i had to guarantee him that no matter what you know i'll stick around and he wanted that commitment basically from him it was not more like uh just mutual of course but you know he wanted to make sure that you know i'm just not just coming out of just because i'm impressed by his this thing but i'm ready to do what it takes because you know liking the music is completely different from pursuing it and being ready to do riyas uh, to sing like that just two complete different uh, things uh but yeah luckily and i was very driven because i was so uh, astonished uh, by his music that you know i completely surrendered to him and that's how the whole journey even began and at that point i had decided that i will give up my dream to become a doctor <laughs> and uh, you know i thought i'll just take up commerce because i knew that it would be really difficult if i you know take up science after my uh, ssc and then it will be really difficult to manage all this i was completely immersed in music and that was peak time you know uh, when i was in ninth and i just dived into this so but I, i'm really lucky you know at that point my parents even though they were not from the music background you know they always supported they were like uh, they never forced me to you know stop my music or anything i still remember like i used to do riyas and classes right a week before you know my ssc exams and even for hsc exams for that matter i still remember that i never stopped them and rather during the exams also my guruji was like he after a point he had to tell me you know uh, because I, i i did not study at the first you know i was so driven so he had to tell me like you know at least complete your ssc hsc properly you don't have to you know give up everything and uh, that's what my parents also always told me you know uh, keep your academic side at least strong enough to you know people I understand that you know you are not doing music just because you can't do anything else it's your choice you know it's not that you are stuck with music because you can't do anything else it's more of like a choice you know i can do anything i want but i still want to use all my intelligence and all my efforts to learn this music and so that's how you know uh, i try to complete uh, my ssc i even for hsc like 
I, I wanted to complete that academic background. So I did not go to college. I was doing distance 11th and 12th. I directly gave my 12th. I was that driven into that. Uh, but then, you know, uh, even when I was dealing with my friends and uh, my parents also thought, you know, a little bit of college experience, because that's the time when you actually are exposed to the whole world. And that's what shapes, you, you know, uh, when you become that confident to deal with people, uh, deal with your contemporary friends or maybe participate in different co competitions and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I had to actually set to a meeting and take Guruji's permission. You know, this is what I'm thinking. But uh, he said that I, I don't mind if you want to do, you know, your normal co college and commerce, but I want an assurance that, you know, this is not going to impact you because otherwise, again, like we have been wasting whatever, like five, six years till now. So, yeah. And then I did college. I, I basically did college so that I could, you know, uh, expose myself to different kinds of music competitions and whatever. So I thoroughly enjoyed those three years of my college. Like I could, I participated in each and every competition as possible, you know, and uh, with God's grace and Guruji's blessings, I was getting all the attention and I was winning all the gold medals there. Again, thanks to Guruji's blessings only. Uh, but what happened was that uh, because of that, I uh, became famous in my college also because college gets very, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they, they actually start loving you if you're bringing a lot of awards to your college and they feel proud of you. And so that's how like all the three years were really memorable for me. And uh, I honestly don't know how I thought of doing my chartered accountancy uh, because I still remember while I was in college, I had a lot of CA friends and I had decided to myself that I'll do anything in life but CA, you know, if I want to do anything. Uh, Trust me, like I had told this to my parents and, but somehow my dad, uh, he, he has a spiritual background. So he always thought, you know, he always told that I think you will do CA. And I was like, are you kidding me? Because I, I'm seeing how my friends are struggling. You know, when I'm enjoying in college, I'm sitting in auditoriums, in cultural committee and they are, all they are doing is, you know, doing articleship and attending classes, no fun. So it's like, I can do anything else but this. And uh, but he always said that for some reason I think you will all, you will you will do your chartered accountancy, and honestly I don't know I don't remember that one fine day. But after my TY become, I just thought you know I'll just try to give that CA entrance exam, and I knew like I don't I I, I don't think I will you know pass through anyways. But you know I just give try my luck. And what happened was, and at that time, I just told my Guruji, you know, I'm just trying my luck. And, you know, and he was like, Ki, okay, karo, mujhe koi problem nahi hai. as long as music is not getting impacted, I don't have any problem. And uh, by God's grace, I cleared in there also in first attempt. And we were glad. And, you know, after that, I kept on pushing just a little bit. Now, you know, I thought like, okay, I'll try to do article shit. You know, I will try to take up some CA classes also and, you know, just try to give inter. Who knows? Maybe I will not be. Anyways, you know, most of the cases you get stuck there. So I'll do music and, you know, just keep doing this, you know, <laughs> side by side. Uh, but like, again, God's grace and all the good mentors that I got in CA also, right? Like, it's good. It's the same almost because uh, all throughout my CA journey also, I learned that uh, the quality of gurus that you get. Uh, even in your uh, academic education, it matters, you know, like the guidance is what basically helps you to get there. And yeah, by God's grace, I was you know, clearing every step uh, in the first attempt. And after that, after that uh, CA inter, I remember uh, then my Guruji also, you know, suddenly felt, you know, that, okay, no, even after doing all this music, you know, if he can clear till CA enter in first attempt, you know, uh, and he's still not giving up music. That means he will stay here. And he also then supported me to complete my CA after that. He was like, you know, no, you do that, please. It's good that you are completing that also and focus on this. And yeah, and then again, I completed my CA also, CA final also in first attempt. And that's how, you know, like, like it started from not doing a college in 11th and 12th. And I kept on pushing, you know, <laughs> thankfully he, he, uh, he didn't stop me, but yeah, I kept on pushing 
and uh, and that's why you know like when people ask me about my experience uh, i'm completely different to the character i played even though you know like i can definitely because it's a very uh, generic character if you say but what happens is just because of the struggles that every artist would face but otherwise i have done all the things that uh, my character you know tried to stay away from <laughs> i have been right. in college bands i have done competitions i have done everything for that matter so yeah it's been an enriching fulfilling journey and that's how i landed up with a chartered accountancy degree and a job but you know also pursuing my music right now again uh, when it comes to sacrificing your dream to be a medical doctor again i could resonate with you at a personal level because if uh, my guruji uh, did not come in my life if i had never heard him i would have been a physicist i would have been a research scientist That's amazing. and then uh, on uh, one live concert i heard him sing patal bihag and then on the next live concert i heard him sing koshi kanada in the nike young and i was bowled over i hounded him for 2 years and now um, so uh coming to the next question sure you have also completed structured courses on indian classical music like the sangeet visharad sangeet alankar and diplomas in indian classical music so yeah. uh, what is your opinion on standardized and institutionalized education uh, in indian classical music is it as effective as the traditional ways of the uh, much hallowed guru shishya parampara because we have all seen senior musicians say that uh, universities cannot create artists and i do agree so then why do we have them should we continue to have them so what is your take on this that's a really nice question uh, okay so allow me to elaborate a little bit on that so uh, just to give everyone a little bit background you know how this whole textbook learning of music started for classical music is uh, and i can speak uh, for myself from the knowledge i have no one or i gain is you know uh, for a very long time uh, this classical music was not considered very respectable especially in uh, all sorts of the classes in the society you know and uh, it was more of <clears throat> you know either maybe in the courts of the kings maybe or you know only where there are certain activities uh that you would just go and perform and look at those uh, people performing there uh but what happened was you know this kind of pious music also where vishnu digambar paluskar ji you know stepped in and he tried to inculcate this kind of music in a school or an educational format where you know you can inculcate all these ideas as primarily as possible of course uh within the kids within the uh, small students who are going to the call uh, to the school so like over a period of time slowly people started respecting this kind of music and uh, the whole point of creating this textbook or this educational uh, theoretical background to this music was to you know make it respectable to everyone and everyone feels that they can do it and that was the main intent of that that the intention of making this textbook learning was never to create artist you know uh, so that is a given uh, but yeah with that having said that you know over a period of time it started gaining in, uh, a lot of importance also uh, because earlier there was like gandhara mahavidyal and other institutions who were conducting exams but now we have you know proper universities over a period of time i don't know uh what what used to be the case 80 years back 70 years back i don't know if you could do like a normal ma arts with music classical music i don't know but i i don't think so you could do it as easily as possible uh but now in universities have acknowledged this music you know as a part of their curriculum and you can do your courses and attain a degree in that and you know uh, help you you know teach other people and pass this whole uh, thing to that with respect to your question you know if you can create artist from that i know you cannot it's like even if you try to the possibility of uh, creating an artist through this kind of learning pattern is remote i wouldn't say no it's not possible because anything is possible uh, but uh, the chances are like really remote because it's a whole different journey you know uh, being a performing artist 
and uh, as compared to a learned musician these are two very different things like there are learned musicians everywhere and with all due respect to them but being a performing artist is a completely different ball game so uh, the journeys are very different but what it does help is you know uh, all these institutions do help uh, attract lot of people towards this music and they at least know some basics so a person who is now you know learning classical music either as you know just to show off or you know just as a part of a kid you know who is trying to do some extra curricular activities but somehow you know if you hear a concert happening he would you know it will poke him to you know go and sit for that concert at least and if the artist says i'm performing yaman it's not again greek and latin for him he at least you know has heard the this phrase or this word sometime so yeah that's how i would say that it's it's doing a great job of creating lot of audience and students of indian classical music but you know with the institutional and university learning uh, there are lot of information uh, and you know things that you can specialize on and they are offering that kind it helps you you know uh, if you are like a good if you are really good and do your masters well it also these days help you to get a job as a as a music teacher so that is a good part that is happening from these institutions you know uh, so yeah that it, it is having on both these sides where it's creating these kind of uh, people who are interested you know kansen jisko bolte hai they are creating kansens also to some extent and you know who are completing their profession or their degrees in uh, in music specifically are rewarded with opportunities where they can you know do like a music teachers job at least so that's also not less rewarding to say okay so we'll be moving on to the next question now this is again about your job and i should refer to them as side hustles because music has always been <laughs> the yeah, central absolutely. point for you so you quit your job at a multinational corporation so that you could pursue hindustani classical music professionally and full time so what made you feel this necessity and what were the risks involved in this decision everything was risky about it honestly <laughs> uh it was quite an insane decision as anyone would think or say uh i always wanted to give it give, give up uh, and try to pursue this full time but it was never a good time you know and it's it is never a good time to leave a job and start something like this uh but things unfolded and like i told you you know my my family has been always supporting to me and including my wife who is even not from a musical background but she respects whatever i do and her parents so even like there was no friction even uh, at that point when they were like we, we trust you and you know you do whatever you can my parents always wanted me to anyways pursue this but they always understood you know all the uh, difficult uh, what can i say you know i'm falling short of words like the not hardships is a very uh, not right word to use but you know the difficult part of pursuing performing arts as a complete uh, full profession as and uh, we are talking up this about like 10 15 years back so that's why you know they wanted me to complete and have an option of academic education and degree to my credit but yeah like i said i always wanted to do this and you know in 2018 i remember suddenly i felt that you know i should give it a try and the main thought that came to my mind you know was you know let's try it right now rather than you know because i don't want to go 10 years from now and think about it like you know i didn't try or i did not i should have done that and that that's in always in vain you know you can keep thinking that i should have or i could have done that has no sense at all so you know at the most what will happen is you know i will fail and i can get back to that so i thought you know let's give it a try and uh, that's how i actually i, I just told my superiors you know, <laughs> i want to quit uh, and surprisingly they were very support like i still remember rather than being you know uh, astonished or this thing they were like you know 
we always wanted you to pursue this because even when i was working there you know i used to do concerts all the time and you know i did not used to take many leaves so that i can use my leaves for in in case generally the concerts happen on weekends uh, but in case if there is one you know i used to take leaves so that i can uh, do my concerts so they were seeing how i was handling everything and they were also supporting and they were actually happy that you know i'm taking a decision to pursue this music uh, as my full time profession so yeah that's how i dived into it beautiful beautiful <laughs> chitrayud would you like to proceed to the next question yes uh, now coming back to the musical uh, as the uh, questions now uh, how important do you think voice culture is for khayal singing i mean awaaz lagane ka tarika is a pretty big deal uh, when you're learning the basics and uh, uh you have learned uh, three different gharanas gwalior jaipur and agra and yeah. traditionally the voice culture and the voice projection for these three gharanas have been different traditionally uh, yes. so do you think it is uh, possible to reconcile the three uh, voice culture techniques if, if for a single musician i mean is that even possible uh, can you sing uh, is, is it a good idea to sing uh, three different gaikis in three different voices that is obviously unwarranted that is not practical now mm -hmm. how do you reconcile all these things now is uh, the awaaz lagane ka tarika crucial part of the gharana's music if you sing the same music in a different voice what may be your natural voice then is that somehow inauthentic so these are some of the questions that come to my mind what is your take on that yeah again that's a really good question and there are two parts to this i would break it into two parts one is about the voice culture specifically and another one is about integrating the gaikis of different gharanas uh, as and as along with you learn uh so <coughs> firstly i would say you know i'm uh, to every people around here i want to you know because all the things that i'm sharing uh, i'm not an authoritative figure and i have heard learned and all these things from gurujis my guruji your guruji uh, laji suresh ji you know he is also like uh -huh. to us so i'll be quoting lot of things which they also have said you know and what we have realized so whatever i'm saying like the credit or everything goes to all these gurus uh, so coming to back to your question you know i always felt the need that it doesn't matter what gharana or this thing you learn but having said that it's very diff very important that you at least know one gharana properly it can be any gharana if you want but you know ek jiska taaleem hota hai wo taaleem hmm. ek gharane ka at least properly hona chahiye it can be either agra jaipur gwalior kiran whatever it may be the reason being is you know you need to first understand what the framework is talking about See the complete framework is not different no matter what gharana you are singing theek hai uska general to yahi rehne wala hai unless you are completely going to dhrupad gaiki that's a, it's a different case but the specifics or the elements of classical music don't change no matter what the gharana is it's more about the style of singing or maybe you know someone will focus on different concepts someone will focus on different concepts or maybe different elements within that uh, music uh, that's how it different but it's very important that you know you to a proper traditional learning in one gharana and once you have a proper understanding of that you also try to understand other gharanas because at that point you understand what you can you know mix from other gharanas at that point if you start with all the everything together um it's not a good thing like pura khichdi bhi hota hai usme like because you don't exactly know ki kiska kya lena chahiye that's the important thing and you are not matured enough at that point you need to spend at least those 5 6 7 years at least i would say into music to understand you know ki okay this is basically the framework that i have been learning and you know this is how other gharanas are different and this is something which uh, you know we can also learn F with respect to me i wouldn't take the credit at all because my guruji himself has learned all these three gharanas so when he is passing on the knowledge to me it's already a blend of all these gharanas but he made sure that you know 
he started and taught us all the important elements and things about gwalior first and then going along he was also telling us you know this is what uh, jaipur gharana talks about or this rag uh, has to be sung specifically you know <laughs> by the jaipur style because that's how it fits there or you know that's how it's been sung or this particular laikari is how is done in agra gharana and you can also do it you know because uh, you and and over a period of time anyways earlier gharana used to be like a very sensitive or touchy aspect to that because they actually belong to that uh, tradition and this thing now it's become like a very cosmopolitan in that sense where you know everyone is learning so there is nothing like uh, because earlier it was like a very uh, important thing that i will not sing the bandishes which belong to that uh, this thing but i think o- over this period everything has evolved pretty much and you know it's it's good if you can take good things from <laughs> other gharanas it also it's also important to understand what suits you when you are taking anything from other gharana just because you like something may not suit your voice at that point or the way right. you are you know, singing uh, your because gharana may also uh, let's say uh, suraj ji mentioned this ki gharana is one thing and there is a shaili also that we call so within the gharanas also you'll sing so many different musicians singing their own styles so right. style is like your own individualistic and gharana is a tradition which is only talking about the concepts but within those concepts everyone has their own style so recognizing that it's very important that you understand what suits you what suits your voice uh, just like i can have a favorite musician but i i will not sing at, at all like him because if i just try to mimic him uh, you know it will not suit me and then <laughs> you know i will rather spoil the the whole part of you know music this thing so yeah. these important uh, things i wanted to mention with regards to your another question which is also important is voice culture rather than voice culture because voice culture will become like a very uh kanth sadhana kanth sadhana yeah. yeah where you can say that how much you work on the medium i i like to call it the medium and i have a take where you know i think avaz sadhana becomes a very very important uh subject to spend a lot of your time on uh, the main reason behind that is you know i look at it as like the processing unit of your art so what happens is if you are learned but if you have not spent or a good amount of time on this machine or your medium no matter how the good good your input is the output is always going to be bad so unless and performing art is all about you know not how much you know but how much you can perform or present in front of people so i have learned right. 200 tracks but if you ask me at this point if i can perform like 60 of them then i know 60 i don't know it's 200 because that 200 number is completely irrelevant as a performing artist okay as a learned musician yeah i can talk about those 200 rags as much as i want but it doesn't help as a performing artist at all so right. uh, having said that you know if you can't perform whatever comes to your mind you are stuck there so ultimately everything boils down to the medium and you need to spend a lot of time in you know honing your medium so that uh, the medium is not a limitation for you to perform that that's the whole point about it. it's not about you know me making my voice like pandit jasraj ji or or like amir khan sir ji or like badi gulam sir that's yeah. not the whole point here but it's about uh, honing your skills as much as possible so that you lessen as many limitations that you have so that you know your medium is rather helping you to communicate all your musical thoughts rather than being you know uh, a hindrance to that so likewise uh, having said that what is important is you spend all that time in kantha sadhana that's the right way to say it and if you actually look at it basically classical music is all about you know surrendering and uh, singing full throat that's exactly what we do so yeah like like i told you like, the styles are different maybe the lagaos will be different but you know once you learn properly for like 5 7 years and you know you develop that kind of a 
अंडरस्टैंडिंग देन यू नो कि ओके दिस राग इज स्पेसिफिकली संग फॉर जयपुर और स्पेसिफिकली संग इन आगरा घराना देन द राग का जो लगाव है बिकॉज दिस आवाज लगाओ एंड राग का स्वर लगाओ दे गो वेरी हैंड इन हैंड लाइक यू विल अंडरस्टैंड इट you cannot isolate both of them because uh that rag ka swara lagao demands that awaaz lagao you know that's how it it's always there so when you are learning that that's the exact time when you understand it and then you know you know i can't be doing what i do in hamir for natakeda and the same thing for dhanashri for that matter so uh, once you are doing like a proper professional learning from a Uh, guru you know as a and, and uh, it's important that you learn from a performing artist you know because he can tell you what it takes to be one that's the whole point of right, it. right. and exactly. with all due respect i don't mean to discredit or not respect anyone i have immense respect for all the learned musicians it's it's just that you know they can give you a lot of shastra the knowledge mm. you know but like suraj says the tantra and the kala you need to learn from a performing artist because you know uh he who has worked on that and mastered it can you know teach you right right absolutely all right uh i'll be moving on to the next question then so this question is again um uh, about the gwalior gharana so we have all grown up listening to the ustads of gwalior gharana and and the traditional gwalior gaiki has been polished and optimized by ustads for centuries now like since yeah. they were the pioneers as well so what are your thoughts on the evolution of the gaiki of gwalior and as a representative how do you think it should be approached standing in 2022 like what have the modern khayalias contributed to this traditional form yeah sure so i wouldn't say i am like the perfect person to opine uh, everything on gwalior specifically because i have been learning all the three gaikis uh, so yeah and i have been performing what it, like the way i sing it's a like it's a combination of all the three gharanas it's not like very traditional gwalior because it has elements from everything uh, but yeah like even in gwalior gharana it's always been you know uh, there are a few different streams that have if you look at them because uh, devdhar ji ramkrishna bua vaje ji kanushkar ji was a different stream yashwan bua joshi mirashi bua yashwan bua joshi uh, that was another different style of singing like i sing sing very different styles of singing but the same gharana and antu bua joshi gajanan bua joshi ji uh, ulash ji and this again is a tradition you know so and these are very very different uh, you can say completely different styles you know uh, and you can sense them even when and you can understand that okay all of singing gwalior gharana but it's sounding very different from each other because they are focusing on different things and the style of singing is very different so yeah it itself and they say that gwalior was the first gharana you know ashtanga pradhan gayaki but all the gharanas emerged from gwalior gharana so everything has evolved uh, it's safe to say that everything evolved from gwalior gharana so absolutely it has evolved a lot over a period of time <laughs> uh but at the same time you know when you say evolved in the current times what has happened is if you look at 50 to 70 years back the other forms of music or the popular forms of music had not gained this much of popularity or importance uh in overall if you look at them so lot of the people were you know easily accessible to classical music you know itna bollywood singer aur ye because this happened in the last 50 years is what i know because if you go 60 70 years back even the film songs were classical based there have been bandishes which have you know directly sung as film songs for that matter uh but then whole this west this, this globalization like the western thoughts came and that's how you know that that has <laughs> impacted this uh the overall music a lot where the popular music pop music that we call you know the light light music pop music uh, emerged and then it started gaining lot of popularity so what happened was at the same time classical music had to also you know evolve over a period of time and that's why you know you always keep on earlier if you listen to the very old recordings you can't understand what words they were singing but these days right. you know, everyone is trying to this is just an example i'm giving but they are paying attention because 
very few people in the audience will actually understand what you are trying to convey in that rag but they are at least you know trying to uh, connect to the tune the melody of that rag and the words so it becomes uh, a little bit important that you pay a little bit attention to this presentation is also another aspect that now uh, we are paying more attention to so as a reason like you know because there are other forms of music you know also it's there's no competition or comparison but it's just that you know because of the other forms you know culturally also we are evolving accordingly the music because music is like the core part of the culture so accordingly as you are also evolving culturally the classical music also is automatically evolving over a period of time so there is no one good thought how the gwalior gharana should be because you know and music is like the is a very relative uh, thing for that right. matter and relative in that sense you know because <laughs> music is very closely associated with memory also uh, uh, what mm. i mean by that is you know a particular if i play a particular melody you know if you have a sad memory associated with that it can make you sad but the same melody if someone has a happy memory associated with it can make him happy so it it is really uh, very relative to say you know ki there is one way of approaching any art form for that matter so yeah but i think like whatever is happening is you know it's a great way the whole thing has evolved over a period of time uh, the only sad part is you know which happens over a period of time is there is leakage that is happening you know so over a period of time uh, the purity you know because you try to mix all the other aspects the original yeah. purity is always getting diluted uh, but yeah like the it's the biggest uh, challenge for any indian classical musician is you know to balance that like balance between the traditionalism and the the, the classicism and the aesthetics about it it's he's always you know are uh, always on the edge you know just to make sure that you know it's aesthetic enough but you know you're not diving too much into that and spoiling the whole traditionalism out of it uh, so yeah yeah that that's pretty much my take on this whole thing i think before we move on to the next question we should all listen to pandit sharod arolkar ji's kedar that little clip oh yeah absolutely <laughs> uh, everyone should listen to this recording this is one recording you know that changed my life completely uh, i am a big big very big fan i wouldn't say follower because you know his gaiki is very amazing to follow especially when it comes to the swara lagaos and the rag uh, this thing you know and that's what i'm talking about like after, even after spending so many years and i've heard his recording for so much so many times you know uh, i still can't you know even sing like the lagaos that he can and that's what makes this uh, whole swara lagao kanthasadana and this whole thing so deep and interesting so yeah yeah let's listen to that Let's proceed.
Absolutely wow. breathtaking. Absolutely breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so beautiful. Okay, I think Chitrayud, yeah, he's back. Okay, yes. Chitrayud, would you like to take it forward? Yes, uh, I'd love to. But before I ask my question, I have some follow-up questions. Uh, the first is you were talking about your own take. Now, I have two questions, basically. So how do you think Gwalior Gaiki or Agra Gaiki or Jaipur Gaiki should be sung in the year 2022? How should a person born in 1988, a millennial for practical purposes, should sing Gwalior, yeah. Jaipur and Agra Gaiki? <laughs> and my second uh, question is, uh, yeah. what exactly would you call Gwalior Gaiki or Agra Gaiki or Jaipur Gaiki then? Because if you look strictly in terms of lineage, I mean, Gwalior Samsthan had its own Gaiki, and the Gaiki that developed in Ichal Karanji in Maharashtra was different. Correct. And then yeah. the, the different Shakhas also developed on its own. But when someone says, I sing Gwalior Gaiki, I'm not exactly singing Nathan Peer Baksha's Gaiki, right? We don't know what Absolutely. it was like because that was before the recording era. So yeah. then what exactly is Gwalior Gaiki? Correct. The first question was very interesting. Uh, how so, like I said, you know, it's very individualistic. Uh, but if you ask me, what he should be doing is he should learn one guy key as properly as he can and keep mixing as many garanas as possible. Not just these three, but if he if he comes across any other guy key, which he thinks, you know, he can uh, intellectually, you know, mix it with his own guy keys, not just by copying it, but, you know, understanding conceptually and you know just absorbing those important aesthetical elements from different gaikis and mixing it with his own you know uh, it's not about just copying something and suddenly you start singing uh, this thing because what happens is just because I like uh, Pandit Kumar Gandharvaji so much I can't start uh, right. copying him or singing like him you know following Kumar Gandharvaji is completely different and uh, you know copying Kumar Gandharvaji is very different you know because when you are singing you are following him you are trying to follow his thought process rather than you know you don't have to sing exactly like him and that's the whole difference mm -hmm. where you understand and follow as many people as possible you know which uh, which you think you can connect to and then mix it with regards to your question you know then what you will call it it doesn't matter anymore uh, I know it's a very uh, harsh way of saying that but you know, we have emerged over a period of time into so much uh, culturally over a period of time. And the way we have learned, it doesn't matter anymore when you say, uh, you know, like I am an artist of Gwalior Gharana or Jaipur Gharana or I'll be singing because I have to adapt to that rag or that composition that I'm singing in again. You know, like for that Kamod, if I'm singing Mati Malaniya, I, I, I have to, you know, sing it in the Gwalior form. I cannot sing Jaipur there, you know. <laughs> I'm forced right. to do that. Even if I try to do that, everyone will, uh, like, uh, I can not speak for everyone, you know, but generally people will not like it because uh, in general parlance, you know, we are talking where people have learned it in a certain way or heard it in a certain way. So that's how you generally follow. At the same time, if I'm singing Natakeda or Prita Masaya, Lalita Gauri, you know, suddenly I cannot do Behlao in that. For that matter, right. I have to stick to the patterns of the way it is moving, especially, and that's why you use akas, right? If I'm singing a lot of uh, prachalit mishra rags, for that matter, you know, uh, I I automatically pursue to that akar, you know, because to, to complicate it less and try to tell them what I'm doing with that, because if you keep adding a lot of words and bol banao into that, you know, you're complicating it further, you know, rather you keep it simple akar and let people understand what you are making the design of. So that's yeah. how you adapt to it uh, on the go as well. And if you are uh, singing Dhanashri or Jai Jai or any other rag also, there can be any mm. other rag also. And you want to show some nice bowl bana which happens in Agra, you know, and which does those rags also sometimes demand those kind of swara lagao. Then you have to adapt to that. Suddenly you can't be singing like Fayyaz Khasa. You know, because then that 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 defeats the whole purpose. But it's about you know, in my style, this is what suits me, and this is what you know I liked about 
his gaiki and i'm trying to imbibe that and you know present a little bit in front of you uh so yeah that's how so ultimately it doesn't matter uh if you are able to say that i'll be performing gwalior because even in gwal even in one rag also even if i start with hamir there can be a bandish which belong to a different tradition and i want to present it in front of audience so i may start with chameli fully champa and then sing a different bandish uh-huh. you know I mean, and it may not belong to gwalior tradition and then i have to treat it if it belongs to any different just giving a vague example but, but if it belongs to a different tradition i have to respect and follow that particular this thing so that it suits the pandis that i'm singing uh so yeah i hope that answers both the questions yes, yes. now uh, coming back to my question uh, yeah. you seem to have um, a sort of spiritual connection with uh, pandit ram bhav marathe because uh, he apart from being a musician was also an actor in marathi theater and he also sang natya sangeet you have acted in films you have acted in marathi tv serials in a way even uh, back in the day classical music was part of uh, the sanskrit theater tradition and uh, uh, marathis in general have always tried to reconcile that because there was always a parallel natya sangeet tradition yeah uh, starting from the days of bal gandharva so uh, even recently you have sung natakedar and that was a bandish composed by pandit ram bhav marathe so would you like to comment on that uh so i don't know what the spiritual connection there might be one uh but this uh, it's not intentionally done but of course i am like like everyone i'm very fascinated about his music you know and he's ulaji's guru also and you can sense it like when ulaji is performing natakedar nat bihag or all those raags you can uh, you know sense uh, you can even hear rambo uh, from his voice you know so yeah. i have i i i was not fortunate enough to you know uh, listen to ram bhav marathi ji live of course but i have tried to listen to as many recordings as possible and uh, so this i i i didn't try to follow him like 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 him or uh, connection maybe you can establish a connect connection because i'm doing all the things that he also did uh sort of mm. but uh, i never tried like that and especially this acting thing uh this was like an accident that happened uh <laughs> because i never like uh, even tried to uh, get into acting for that matter this completely actually came to me and then you know i got involved in that and somehow you know it unfolded and then i ended up being the uh, core part of that entire film so that's how it actually uh unfolded for me in my life and meanwhile you know because i got into that then i also got into the serial acting where they again wanted like a musician but it was like very brief uh, to mention uh, but yeah so that way i wouldn't i don't know if i have it it's it's good to feel that way uh, but yeah i absolutely admire everything about his music i've heard a lot of right. his music a lot of his recordings and yeah i still do and yeah absolutely everything about him over to you shonabho hello am i audible can you hear yeah me? yes you are yeah uh, yeah my mic was actually having a having some weird issue just just a while back so I was fixing it okay no so problem before, we can hear you before we move on to the next question i think we should definitely listen to a little snippet of that nat kedar Oh yeah sure <laughs> Be 
पतियान भेज सने सन भेज अचानक आए मोर बाल मवा पिया घर आए आए जी पिया घर आए आए जी पिया घर आया घर आया घर आए absolutely beautiful wow. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay so now i'm going to move to the next question this sure. is again now we are moving slowly towards your career as an actor so you played the role of pandit devi paluskar ji in mm. the film gaan yogi which did not really uh, release for a public screening at every platform yeah. but it was screened at select places all over mumbai yeah. and maharashtra and various other places so how did that impact your musical personality playing the role of a stalwart like him uh, so honestly you know uh, this happened like really long back almost 12 13 years back so i i wasn't that matured enough or you know uh, that learned enough at that point it did definitely changed my life because i i started listening to dv paluskar ji a lot uh, but if you ask me you know uh, i do feel spiritually connected to him uh, a lot uh, and lot of people have told me about this you know uh, when they were casting for it somehow they thought that i looked a little bit like him but uh, many of the people i don't know i can only speak because Uh, i'm telling you what lot of people told me about but uh, they have come up to me after the concert and said that you know i remind them like my voice reminds them of uh, dv paluskar ji so that phase and i never tried in that way you know because for a very long time i had not heard dv paluskar ji until you know i was preparing uh, for that role and that time i actually realized that and a funny incident also <laughs> happened uh just sharing it for fun uh so what happened was when we were trying to we were sitting and trying to understand or doing some editing for that and they for some of the recordings they actually for whatever was available of uh, paluskar ji they used that recordings where i was miming to that you know and where for what was not available i actually sang that but when i was singing anyways you know for that thing i had to sing everything and uh, the funny thing that happened was <coughs> when we were sitting for editing uh, that whatever the shot uh, bandish uh, finished and i told him like uh, or nahi it's just someone i think and he said that oh, it's very miming very perfectly you know how did you manage to mime that perfect and then someone told me no no it was his voice only it was not paluskar <laughs> ji we are we are not you know put the this thing so uh in some cases you know you can actually uh, we sense that similarity in the voice also a lot lot many people have told me uh so yeah it uh, like i told you it was like quite a while back so at that point it did not change my life completely completely you know or you know i was not old enough to understand or change my outlook towards anything uh but what the biggest thing that happened is i started listening to paluskar ji a lot and after that needless to say you know i became such a big fan because i follow a lot of his music and thankfully because the internet has evolved so much now we have everything available on the youtube uh which was like just few years back it was a very big deal to you know get all these old recordings so 
yeah now i try to listen to everything for that matter whatever is available outside uh, out there from polska ji i have heard it you know so that way is it has impacted me a lot right okay so i think now it's time to move to the last question for the evening today and sure. this is of yes. course about your film the disciple so chitrad do you want to go ahead or should i yes yes sure so what was the motivation behind the film disciple and your character sharad nerulkar how relatable was it playing the role of a struggling khayalia and uh, i'll uh, continue uh, with the previous question as well because you are you are also an actor so are you a trained actor i mean uh, have you uh, done any courses on acting any workshop or that of that matter and how do you prepare for your characters how do you get into the skin of your character do you follow any method acting anything of that sort so uh, because dv paluska sir was a historical character and sharad nerulkar is a fictional uh, fairly modern character fairly different yeah. characters so both are classical musicians so the treatment obviously was different so how did you prepare yourself for these two characters right uh, so uh, to answer your first question right so this was completely chaitanya tamhani's baby mm -hmm. you know he came up with this whole uh, story about this character uh, there is no particular inspiration because a lot of people ask me you know is this based on someone or you know is this my someone from your field or something no trust me all these are fictional characters and uh, like chaitanya keeps on saying in all his interviews you know it has come up from his own insecurities which he talks about you know and he wanted to portray something uh, because the whole aspect of it was not to you know uh, tell a story about classical music or about that character rather it was more about the internal struggle that every individual goes through and uh, you know all the time you see the movies they are either talking about like the super successes or the super failures and 80% you know are the stuff which no one talks about it because mediocre is right from the between failure and success that's everything mediocre it can be you know everything and that's one way of celebrating mediocrity you know where uh, <laughs> excuse me where we are talking about people you know who are giving their best you know and there are so many of sharads everywhere around us who are trying to give everything that's possible you know and but they are not reaching where that they are not failures honestly to uh, say like that because you no know, lot of people told me it's very depressing uh, anyways the, the film is not trying to give a message or anything for that matter because a lot of people told me like what are you trying to say out of it you know it's just like a depiction of that character's life they are not trying to tell anything out of that you know and we are trying a story about a person who is struggling you know internally struggling uh, to understand like where he is going wrong you know somehow he is not able to find out and it's not depressing because uh, uh, if you ask me you know how i interpret is in the third chapter where he gives up everything and you know he is doing that's the first time in the, the, the whole film very smiling you know <laughs> where you know he he didn't end up like a a complete failure he has his own family he is happy with them you know and he is still doing something which is related to the tradition uh, of music that he grew up in or he has been studying so yeah like the definition of success is very different from for everybody for that matter uh, but yeah the whole film is trying to talk about all the all the things that every artist goes through what makes it generic like i said is and why i could connect to that is because you know there is a sharad nerukar inside every one of us like and at different stages like we are jealous of our fellow artists at different st stages we are you know anxious about uh, what we are going to perform uh, we are afraid you know sometimes ki what my guru ji will feel we also surrender ourselves to our guru so all those emotions are not just me but you know every person in this field or rather not just classical music but all artists i would say you know Uh, to some extent has felt all these emotions sometime in their life so it is definitely relatable with regards to the acting part like i told you know i don't believe in that character to be very honest because i have spent my life completely opposite to what that character is all about you know 
I have done everything. Like, and he is trying to, you know, fo- stay focused and only do what matters to him. You know, stay very loyal to all the uh, maestros that I have been talking about. And I have done every single thing that uh, maestros uh, told everyone to stay away from. Abhi acting bhi kar liya to kuch bacha nahi hai. To, to. Uh, yeah, so in that sense, uh, the whole credit, you know, how how I prepared for that, I, I call myself like a forced method actor, because I have no formal training of acting. And if you talk about uh, long back when I did Devi Paluskarji's role, I don't think it was like a great deal, because, you know, they were just telling me what to do. It was more like a documentary film, rather than like a right. proper feature film. So... Yeah, like I'm was thinking, it possible for you to retrieve any kind of reference material to build the character of TV Paluskar? I don't think there was because there are no videos no. available of how he walked, how he looked. You cannot no, actually no, do that. No, no, yeah. So that you, was we not, don't even have no. uh, uh, even a voice recording of his giving a speech or anything speaking. We only hear him singing. Absolutely. So how yeah. do you develop a historical character when you don't have that much of reference? Uh, no, so honestly, you know, if you ask me, I did not do a great job, you know, as 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 much when I looked at the film, you know, I was like, hai, chalo. you know, because Achha. I resembled the face and uh, and because I, I my singing also my voice and everything hmm. and I looked that part, basically, you know, at that point, I was casted for that and uh, reference material wise, no, but uh, Anjali Kirtane Ji, who, you know, produced that and directed that. So she had done a lot of uh, research on Paluskarji, uh, offline research, a lot of them, that she had tried to visit where he stayed and all that stuff. So, you know, she used to give me some pointers, you know, that's how he, he would do generally or this thing. So that was all that, uh, this thing. But if you look at, the, if you get to watch that film, you will know, like, it's not like very much of acting because it's kind of more like documentaries. So, you know, there are like few pieces where I was, you know, playing him. Okay. It was not like a playing completely like his character from and his journey or so uh, so yeah uh, so wo ho gaya, matlab, itna uske liye, uh, uh, nahi karna pada tha. this was a re- like a really big deal because you know uh, uh, not just the protagonist but if you look at the film like almost in all the frames I am I'm there unless you look at the flashback or you know where I'm completely not there like there will be very few scenes so to maintain that it, it, the, the whole credit goes to Chaitanya because we did lots of workshops before the film and workshops were more to you know internalize that character and rather than acting we are focused on the thought process because somehow I was not able to relate to that character because like like relate as in like I can relate to the feelings that he's going through it's not but his ideology you know where he is stuck because and like why wouldn't he do like this you know something like that and that's what the more discussions were happening around where you know I had to become that character and over a period of time it actually did you know I started thinking like him and that was the whole idea you know other because these kind of emotions uh, you can't fake it on the screen right. so if you think that you know I am like a Sharad Nelukar I would be happy if you feel so because then you know I would say that okay I did a fair job you know of presenting him uh, so if someone doesn't know me he would definitely not know me ki, uh, I, I'm I'm doing everything that this character, you know, <laughs> uh, hates. Uh, so, yeah, so that was the main preparation. Apart from the physical transformation, I had to do that also, which the, like, I had to lose a lot of kgs because I was playing, like, the period, kind of like the semi-period thing, you know, where I was, I had to look 22 years of age also and for 38 also and 42 also. So that was, like, a huge leap. So I had to lose, then again, gain lots of, uh, weight. So that was a physical transformation side by side that was going. But uh, the main thing I would talk about is, you know, this internal transformation. I had to actually um, step into the shoes of that character where I started imagining and behaving like Sharad. Behaving as in, and uh, Chaitanya told me a very interesting thing, you know, when you're trying to, even like for this method, like I'm, I'm no one to talk about acting as such. But uh, we think that, you know, you become like that character. It's not like that. You know, he told me a very specific thing, which I would like to share with everyone is, he said, you don't have to become Sharad Nirulkar. Because then again, it's like faking it. It's trying to find the Sharad Nirulkar inside you. 
it's more about that okay yeah that's how you don't fake it you know that's how you try to you know go to those areas which are that that children have come inside you and try to relieve them and that's very exhausting actually because then you actually go to all those emotions that you actually feel and then you start behaving like him you know you don't have to you know that that's how you explore that and that was like a really important and nice tip that he told me which made things i wouldn't say easy you know but it gave me a proper direction to work on and that was like a brilliant tip because generally what we think is method acting is you know becoming like that character it's not he told me it's not like that because if, even if you're trying to become him it's again like you're faking it because you are not that character you try to find that character inside you and that's how you make it real so that that's what made the whole journey interesting and challenging okay i hope uh, i answered the both the questions i don't remember the second part yes you have okay dada so before we conclude tonight session i think like before our concluding statements we should watch the trailer for the disciple for people who have sure, sure, sure. it found it out sure aple purse spardak ahet sharad nerulkar भारतीय शास्त्रीय संगीताला मार्गी संगीत उगीच नाही म्हणत रागाच्या माध्यमातून परमेश्वरापर्यंत पोहोचण्याची वाट दाखवली आहे आणि तो मार्ग प्राप्त करण्यासाठी त्याग हा करावाच लागणार ऐक आधी ऐकून गा हे मी एकतर रियाज करू शकतो किंवा नोकरी करू शकतो हे दोन्ही दोन्ही नाही जमणार मला या वाटेवर चालायचं असेल तर एकट आणि उपाशी राहायला शिका Okay, so the if you haven't watched it, please do watch this. It's a completely eye-opening movie, and I really, really loved it, like from the bottom of my heart. And thank, thank you so you, much, Sada, so for being here on Upaj. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. And I was really glad, you know. And thanks to Chitrajji also because he is also a musician himself. So we could talk a lot in depth about. uh core musical concepts and this thing rather than you know talking very generically uh so yeah i had a nice time also so thank you for that so we always try to make sure that we get something educational at least for ourselves from every interview so that's why <laughs> no that's great that's great thank you so much so everyone we'll be concluding the session right now and i think we should end also with one of dada's brilliant performances so it's it's night but still this is one of my favorite recordings of his so let's listen to this beautiful performance of rag daisy by dada and thank you everyone good night bala ma gaila mora 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 padadesh va jaye basela padadesh va jaye basela bala ma gaila mora bala ma gaila ना 
मोरा बल मारेला मोरा बल Yeah. 